What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, a fifth year orthopedic surgery resident. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about a player's injury to his shoulder and what we as orthopedic surgeons would do for this type of injury. For those who are unaware, Paul George has been suffering from a shoulder injury for the majority of the season this year. And he finally underwent surgery recently for his rotator cuff. So I wanted to talk about what is a rotator cuff, what injuries can you sustain from that, and what we as orthopedic surgeons would do for it. So to explain, the rotator cuff is a group of muscles that attach from the scapula, so that's the shoulder blade here, and they attach to the proximal portion of the humerus here. It's a group of four of them, four muscles that control the movement of the arm. So we can, we refer to it as the sits muscles. So you have your supraspinatus, which is right here. You have your infraspinatus, which is right here. Your teres minor, which is back here. And then your subscapularis, which is in the front of your your shoulder here. So these muscles control the uh, movement of your arm and also they provide stability to your arm. And the combination of all four of these muscles, they allow you to lift up your arm as well as external rotate and internal rotate your arm to do certain movements. And you can have an injury to this mus these muscles where one or either all of these muscles are torn from repetitive trauma, such as in swimmers and football players and basketball players, or a lot of patients have these injuries as they get older and they have what's called asymptomatic tears. So if you were to take 100 people off of the street who are walking down the street who are above the age of let's say 60 or 70, majority of them will have what's called asymptomatic rotator cuff tears, which means they have tears in their rotator cuff just because of their age and they're asymptomatic, they don't have any symptoms about it, so there's nothing to do about it. Versus someone like Paul George, who repetitively over time does this motion here, and does a lot of shooting motions and, and guarding motions with his hands, he can have a tear of his rotator cuff. So, the report states that he has a tear of his supraspinatus, which is one of the uh, Muscle, groups of the muscles here in the, the uh, front aspect of the uh, shoulder here, supraspinatus. And when you have a tear of that rotator cuff muscle or any muscle in the um, out of your four rotator cuff muscles, you can have pain, weakness, and inability to use your arm. So these rotator cuff muscles allow you to lift up your arm and externally rotate and internally rotate. So if you have a tear of one of these muscles, you will have pain and weakness in doing those particular motions. So what do we do about this as orthopedic surgeons? So as an orthopedic surgeon, we would usually diagnose this with the MRI. First, you start off with your clinical exam. You examine the patient and see, are they able to do those motions as we just discussed? And if they have pain or weakness in those particular motions, that will indicate that that patient may have an injury to their rotator cuff. Then we will get an MRI to look at the rotator cuff and we can diagnose it uh, with the uh, MRI or confirm our suspicion. After that, if it's a partial thickness tear, which means it's just a small tear, it didn't go all the way through the rotator cuff, sometimes we can treat that with physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, cortical steroid injections, but there's a small chance that some of these partial thickness rotator cuff tears can progress to a full thickness, which means that it goes all the way down through the entire tendon. When that happens, surgery is usually recommended, and that's what Paul George just had. He was found to have a partial thickness tear of his rotator cuff. It's probably best for him to go ahead and get that fixed since he's repetitively going through these motions here and then doing a lot of shooting. He's very physically active. So it's best to go ahead and fix that rotator cuff uh, tear. How do we fix this as uh, orthopedic surgeons in general? The surgeries can be done arthroscopically, which means through a small camera and a scope, which we make small incisions on the back portion of your shoulder, 
the anterior portion of your shoulder here, and then the lateral or outside of your portion, your portion of your shoulder here, put a small camera in there and a scope and we can fix the rotator cuff with sutures and what's called anchors. The anchors go inside the bone and they hold the sutures and we tie the rotator cuff tendon down to the bone until it heals. Or we can make a small incision on the lateral side of your shoulder here and go in and look at the rotator cuff tendon tear and repair it that way. So Paul George just had this. I'm not sure what type of surgery that he had, arthroscopic versus open procedure, but usually the recovery process for this is a long one. After a number of months of rehab, physical therapy, and then your strengthening process, you can get back out there and start playing. So I hope Paul George, I wish him a speedy recovery. I hope this uh, video helps you guys and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.